It is Thursday. This means it is almost Friday here at Kisetsu and today I will show you a method of developing a shohan bonsai from scratch from a an ordinary nursery material. And there are two ways of starting a shohan bonsai from a really primitive material bought in a garden center. One is to style the tree first, let it be in the original pot, and then later beginning to reduce the root system so it fits in the desired pot for the design of the tree. Or, as we do today, doing the opposite, start with adapting the tree to the pot, and then later make the more refined styling. Today I will just select the branches that I will need for the future, adapt it to the pot, let it establish itself in there, and then later, maybe this winter, if everything goes well, I will begin to style it more refined in a more refined stage, or maybe next year. This is a Chamasuberis. The variety is Tuoetis. Tuoetis. Don't know if that's pronounced right. And that is a variety as is of the Chamasuberis types. And probably you are familiar with the Japanese uh, Hinoki Cypress, a very valuable specimen in Japan making these very uh, fine and small bundles of needles. This is a different needle type, but I think it can be a very nice small twin trunk tree for a show-in style tree. And the reason I ch chose this one is because of the needle length and because of the ramification. The trunks have to improve with time. And uh, if you take the Hinoki suppress, it is very valuable often because it takes such a long, long time to grow, it's very slow, slowly growing, and to get a decent thick trunk is uh, time consuming. These trunks are not that thick, but they are good for a twin trunk where you don't need that very massive trunk mass uh, to begin with, and later it can uh, expand a little if we let some top shoots grow freely. I'll show you that in this video too. This is just one of the lectures I'm also offering at the tutorials. Uh, for members at Kisetsu N, so you can subscribe there and get a lot of this information this way too. In the June episode I will style a U, and there we will do the opposite method, keeping it in the pot first, shaping the tree, and then later reduce the root mass. And this process is something you can follow over time here at Kisetsu N, and it is not just initial styling, you will be able to follow the process you should stay as a member throughout time and see how the trees develop that will shape here. Now, let's get started and fix this little one. What I was trying to say before this hailstorm all of a sudden and thunder came in over was that I would like to show you how to first transplant this tree and then style it later on. Weather is really strange this year. This month already in the middle of May we had more rain than maybe in history, I don't know, but it's really pouring cats and dogs at the moment. Let's get back to business and try to develop this tree into a future shohan. But I have to say, this is an initial styling. It is transplanting a tree into a pot. It's not a bonsai yet. That will take a few years to come. But in four, five, six years, it will improve a lot. And then it's almost uh, always just a matter of time and patience and dedication to develop a tree from scratch. First, I will cover the bottom of the pot with a little mesh here so the soil will not run out of the draining holes. Now it's time to look at the bottom of 
the base of the trunk, removing the topsoil to see where the first root emerges. And just to say it, if you notice a finger that looks a little odd, having a bent like this, uh, it works. But this morning I had an accident. I was uh, out chasing sheep. Yeah, I know it sounds uh, crazy, but we have sheep in our at our property and uh, they were broken out of the fence. I had to take them in, I had to lift them over the fence and uh, suddenly my finger looked a little bit odd. So I had to drag it in place. It hurt a little, uh, not anymore. It just looked very odd. Maybe I should put some wire on and straighten it out. No, no worries. It is uh, swollen up and will hopefully straighten up the next days. So a lot of drama today, thunder, lightning, fingers hurt. Sheep running. Let's get back to something we can control a bit, the bonsai. It looks like there is a very nice base around here. And even a third trunk, if I remove a little branch at the back, then we can form this into a third trunk instead of have a mother and child uh, or a twin trunk. I can make a, a smaller trunk of this one over here. The base is fine here. There are some good roots. So I will start cutting the root ball so it is shorter and can fit in this flat container and spread it out. It is a drastic pruning, but it is a young tree. It is vigorously growing. And there's a big difference on doing that at a root system that is young and small and fresh and doing it at an older tree with some years on that will have more difficult to recover. So this is young and vigorous and I have the time to do it. It will take a few years and then we'll, this will be a very good established tree. Therefore I will remove this one at the back. And this one. And then it is more clear that we have three fine trunks here. And there will be a little of dead needles at the inside that we have to peel off every year. That's a natural dye bag of old leaves that can be easily removed at this time. And then it will look fresh and green. I start cutting about half way through to see where the roots are emerging from. And then I will remove some of the thicker roots at the inside if needed. I can cut further, there are plenty of roots, but first I will remove some of the soil to spread out the roots a little. There are a lot of fibrous fresh roots that will drag up water and nutrients. So I know this look like a rough treatment, but there are plenty of roots to take over. So I am freeing them, especially at the outside, opening up. And this is a good time of the year, not the time of the year, but the weather is good and the temperatures are good and the timing to do drastic root pruning is in spring when the temperatures are not too high and that is much later this year than usual. Usually this should have been done a month ago. And then when there are signs of new fresh growth coming out, this means that the tree is active and will react positively to a high root pruning. I will shorten some of these center roots so it can be in a flat pot. Let's test if this is enough. It is. So this is what it will be and I will not remove all of the old soil because then I ruin too many of the fibrous small roots, so I'll let some stay. And this will be it. Some will 
plus this with water to clean the roots completely and that is a possibility but likes a little to stay if there is any kind of mucoritza or fun, uh, that can help drag up water and we can arrange some of these roots at the same time this will just be pruned off so I let a little of the soil stay it is fresh and fine and keeps it uh, moist a little longer keeps the humidity up in within the soil base so there's a flat root system possible root to pick up here and this will fit in the pot so I will fill the pot with a good mixture of Akadama and pumice and that's it the soil mixture is a quarter pumice this is a white and then three quarters of a fine hard Akadama for show him and the reason why I use only a quarter of pumice is it has to go into this narrow pot so I want to keep up humidity the same with the organic soil here uh, a kind of sparknum uh, acid neutral will help keeping the moisture next thing is adding wires to secure the tree so it can't rock at all And I will add two pieces. Maybe it was a little generous with the first piece, but better than becoming short. Here and here, and then I can. Okay, and ouch, my finger. So now I am able to place the tree in here. I will add the soil mixture. And as you may notice, I do not add any kind of drainage layer because if there is a drainage layer, it will not drain very well because of water tension. It will be better to have just the layer of soil directly above the drainage holes without a layer of uh, a coarser mixture. Then it will not drain as much because of water tension uh, you know, like when you have water on top of a cup, it will make a little bowl above before it runs over. And that will happen underneath here at the drainage holes if you do not have the soil in close contact to the holes. So better drainage with soil directly at the bottom. Building a little top up here. And then the fun part comes, arranging the tree in the right position with one trunk a little in front of the other giving it the right angle then tighten up with the wires to securely fix the tree it's very important that it is not able to move at all when sitting in the pot because then you will lose some of those small feathery roots that are important to keep intact keeping a healthy growth of the tree and dragging up water and nutrients this is it and a little test if it sits i'm able to lift the pot without it moving at all then i cut the ends of the wire, push them in place and I can fill up with the soil. And using a chopstick to gently push it in between the roots down here and being secure there are no air looms. We need oxygen with a soil mixture that is very open in structure but no pockets of air that can dry out and kill roots.
and using a chopstick with a blunt end so I'm able to push it in a little and it, I could also use the other end if I have bigger roots. But here it's just small feathery roots and I will get these in place so they will not dry out. I have used a soil mixture of one quarter of pumice or less, actually, uh, because I want it to keep it very humid to give the new roots a good chance of getting uh, get going. And the uh, Shamasuperis are a kind of tree. Also, the Hinocchi cypresses, cypresses uh, in general likes a humid environment. Uh, they don't tolerate to dry out too much at the roots. They will easily dry out and be killed. But also uh, the needles like a humid uh, surrounding. So placing them on top of a wet water tray will be a good idea to keep the environment moist. Now I will water it and then I will add a little uh, dried mosses to keep the surface uh, more humid so the roots will not dry out at the top. But first a little watering and then we'll can add just a few branches. I water it until I'm sure it runs through the full soil and it does it already. There's not a lot of soil. The last watering and then I will come back and water it several times more, two or three times more, so the soil has time to settle. And I place these mosses to keep the surface from drying out too fast and keeping the top roots growing well underneath. It is the same moss used for air laying. You can buy it at bonsai shops. And it just helps keeping up the humidity longer. The last thing I will do is pruning out a little so I get a clear view of the trunks, select some of the main branches to keep and then prune this top so it can extend and thicken up the trunks with time. And the principle is to take whatever goes directly outwards or inside between those two trunks, especially at the lower part, a little less at the top. And trimming some of the growth that is too long and at the same time this will balance the strength of the tree after the reduction of the root mass. This one I will let be as a third trunk. Let's see how that develops or we can sacrifice it later. It will only be a light pruning. I need some folded mass, some needles to produce photosynthesis and energy for the tree. So I remove what is obviously not needed and not much more. This is the main trunk, so I will like to lower this one a little. I don't need to thicken that up a lot, but will only thicken up the main trunk. So I will find a place here where I can have a new leader growing up. And we have to lower this small. The principle is that you need a maybe a balance of one third and two thirds, but don't do not take that too strict or rigidly. Use your judgment, aesthetic judgment, to see what works. In this case, I will go until here. I have a new leader that can take over from there. I think I will leave it at this so we can keep enough growth in the tree and then later it will be time to make the adjustments, making some wiring and again reducing some of the foliage mass. But I will hide that for a later time when the tree has recovered from the repotting and show some strong growth again. And I expect that to be 
during autumn or winter that we can make the next part of the styling. Then I will move to the top part, just taking a little away from this inside. And the principle is that if you let the top grow with an amount of foliage that is comparable to the amount of foliage at some of the middle strong branches or strongest branches lower at the tree, then you will have a balance when the top begins to speed up and grow. If you just leave all the growth at the top, you will weaken the lower part and will not be able to develop the tree satisfy, satisfyingly at that part. Therefore, it is necessary that this top growth only have growth at the end and the bare part below just stays naked if anything should pop out there. Remove it so you have a balance between this, that elongating shoot and the branches growing lower. If you miss that balance, you will weaken the lower part and you will not develop the tree satisfyingly. If you have this, and that will be a sacrifice uh, branch use for thickening up the main trunk. If you are not having the, a balance between these two parts, you will miss uh, uh, the opportunity to design and develop the tree beneath that top growth at the same time. If you keep the balance, you can make a perfectly development of your tree below that top sacrifice branch as long as it's just growing upwards and only have growth at the end. Because what thickens up the trunk is not the foliage mass at the top, it is the elongating of it that would thicken the lower part. The tree will be kept in semi-shade. I will keep it out of the direct sun during the midday for the first two weeks. Then after a month it will be put into more sun and it will get some fertilizers to strengthen it all up and then we can begin to design the tree for real at a later time. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. This is what we do at Kisetsu N every month. There is a big package of different tutorials, seasonal approach. We are doing a lot about showing, but also middle sized and a little larger bonsai. So thank you for watching this almost Friday. Enjoy your weekend with your bonsai. Thank you.